The Wanderer, from the Exeter Book. Oft a solitary mortal wisheth for grace, his maker's mercy, though sick at heart he must long traverse the watery ways, with his hands must stir the rime-cold seas, and tread the paths of exile. Fate is full stubborn. So spake a wanderer, mindful of miseries, of hostile slaughters, of dear kinsmen's fall. Oft must I alone, each early morn, bewail my woes. There is none now living to whom I dare openly reveal my most innermost thoughts. Verily know I, it is a noble virtue in a man to bind fast the mind's enclosure, to guard his treasure chamber, whatever he may think. A weary mind cannot resist fate, nor can a sad soul afford help. Wherefore, they who yearn for glory oft bind fast in their bosoms a troubled heart. So must I often bind in fetters my soul's thoughts, miserably wretched, deprived of country, far from my noble kin since the day now long ago when the earth's darkness covered my bounteous friend, and I went abject thence, stricken with winters, over the frozen waves, sad sought I the hall of some giver of treasure, some place far or near, where one I might find who in the mead hall would show me love, and would comfort me in my friendlessness, and cheer me with delights. He knoweth who tried, how dire is care as comrade to him, who has few trusty friends. His portion is the exile's track. Not twisted gold, a body chilled with frost, naught of earth's bliss. He remembers the retainers and the receipt of the treasure, how in his youth his generous lord regaled him at the feast. But all delight has fallen away. For this knows he who must long forgo, the wise counsels of his dear lord and friend, that often when sorrow and sleep both together bind him, poor solitary wretch, it seems to him in fancy, as though he clasps and kisses his great lord, and on his knee lays hands and head, even as when, erewhile in former days, he shared the gift stool's bounty, then wakes again the friendless white, sees before him the fallow ways, seabirds bathing and spreading their wings, falling hoarfrost and snow mingled with hail. Then the wounds of his heart become the heavier. In grief for the loved one, his sorrow is renewed. When the memory of kinsmen passes through his mind, he greets them with snatches of song. He scans them eagerly, comrades of heroes. Soon they swim away. The sailor souls do not bring thither many old familiar songs. His grief is renewed. Who must too often send forth his weary spirit over the frozen waves? Verily, I cannot imagine as I survey this world why my mind should not be saddened when I fully consider the life of earls how they have suddenly resigned their halls, brave-hearted fellows. So day by day, this middle earth declines and falls. For mortal cannot grow wise until he gain his year's portion in the world. A wise man must be patient. He must not be too passionate, not too hasty of speech, not too timid a warrior, neither too rash, nor too afeard, nor too exultant, nor too greedy of money, never too ready to boast, ere he know full well. A man must pause when he utters a boast, until, for all his magnanimity, he really know whither his heart's meditation will tend. A wise man must grasp how ghastly it will be when all the wealth of this world stands waste, 
Even as now throughout this Middle Earth, many a wall stands windbeaten, covered with rime, the hedges uprooted, the guest halls crumble, the masters lie bereft of joy, the warrior band has all fallen, once so stately at the rampart. War seized some and carried them on their way hence. One a bird bore off over the deep sea, another the grey wolf apportioned unto death. A third, a sad-faced lord imprisoned within an earth cave. Thus did the creator of men lay waste this abode, until, deprived of the noise of its inhabitants, the ancient buildings of the giants stood empty. Wherefore, he who reflects well with wise contemplation on this walled place and this dark life, sagacious of spirit, oft calls back to mind many a fatal fight, and breaks forth in these words. Where is gone the horse? Where is gone the hero? Where is gone the giver of treasure? Where are gone the seats of the feast? Where are the joys of the hall? Ah, thou bright cup! Ah, thou mailed warrior! Ah, thou prince's pride! How has the time passed away? has darkened beneath the veil of night as if it had not been. Where once warriors trod, now stands a wondrous high wall, glistening with worm shapes, the might of the spears, slaughter-loving weapons, swept off the nobles, theirs was a glorious fate. But the storms lash the rocky slopes, and falling snowdrift binds the earth, all winter's terror when night's one shadow comes darkling and summons from the north fierce hailstorms to the grievance of men. All the realm of earth is full of hardships. Fate's decree changes the world beneath the heavens. Here, wealth passes away. Here, friend passes away. Here, man passes away. Here, woman passes away. All this Earth's structure becomes empty. So spake the wise of heart. He sat apart in thought. Worthy is he who keeps his faith. A man must never too rashly divulge his bosom's grief, unless he know beforehand bravely to find its cure. Well is it with him who seeks grace. Solace of the Father in Heaven, with whom resteth all our security. <laughs>